Hello, and welcome to the Battle Wagon. With the new Shadows of the Galaxy set coming out, I wanted to look at some of the traits that will be making an impact on deck building. I'll start by exploring the new Imperials, Officials, and Rebels, which will primarily be used as a way to improve set 1 decks. Then I'll look at Bounty Hunters, Items, and Transports, and explain why these traits will be important. Then I'll look at the Mandalorian and Wookiee Tribal traits. There are 12 new Imperials, some of which work quite well with existing cards. Gar Saxon's leader text works well with experienced tokens or shields like Lieutenant Childson, Gideon Hask, Rook, 7th Fleet Defender, and TIE Advanced. Moff Gideon provides a damage bonus to existing Imperials that cost 3 or less. Dr. Pershing and the Client have potential for any Vigilance decks. Cards like Phase 3 Dark Trooper, Scanning Officer, Lurking TIE Phantom, and Incinerator Trooper are likely to find spots in the early meta. But the real highlight on this list is the 5 cost Super Commando unit which is a 4-4 shielded unit that activates its own sentinel condition. If you are looking for additional ways to activate the sentinel ability on the Emperor's Royal Guard, there are six new non-heroism officials. Both of the new Imperial leaders are also officials, which works once they are deployed. However, the Scanning Officer is a great first turn play that can set up your turn 2 sentinel. The Client and Cobb Vanth are awkward because they compete with the Guard as a turn 2 play. Supreme Leader Snoke does enough to affect the game state to be useful without some guards. After all, look how immensely useful his Praetorian guards were at saving him in the movie. There are four new rebels that can be buffed by Wing Leader, Fleet Lieutenant, and Metal Ceremony. Gray Squadron Y-Wing is a heroism-only card that can round out the makings of an early space presence for any deck. Wanted Insurgent is a 3-cost 4-4 unit with a built-in bounty. It is not a heroic unit, meaning you won't likely see it in the current Sabine and Leia archetypes. However, you might start seeing a new double aggression deck which uses the set two alternatives for a cause I believe in. Cassian Andor is another three cost rebel which boasts the same 3-5 stat line as the legendary Boba Fett. Despite entering play ready when you smuggle, this doesn't quite fit into any existing decks currently in playtesting. General Raikin, however, is a mid-game card with a buffing ability that has been seen in some early versions of Double Command Heroism decks. However, I think he might be a little overrated. Before I explain the necessity, I want to point out that there are six bounty hunters in Set 1 Spark of Rebellion, including both the Boba Fett and IG-88 leaders. Several of these cards find representation in most versions of the highly successful Boba Fett decks. Early testing has seen a rise in the use of Bounty Hunter crew, specifically in order to retrieve Palpatine's return and other high impactful events. Set 2, Shadows of the Galaxy, increases the number of Bounty Hunters by an additional 23. Here they are sorted by Aspect. 3 Leaders, 3 Vigilance, 2 Command, 8 Aggression, which includes Jango Fett, 5 Cunning, 2 Villainy, and 1 without any Aspect. So what good are Bounty Hunters? Well, there's five cards which utilize their trait. Bounty Guild Initiate is a cheap unit, which is worthless. Headhunting lets you attack with three units, with increased attack if they are a Bounty Hunter. Unfortunately, none of these attacks can target a base. Toro Calican is a Bounty Hunter himself, but he has a solid 3-5 stat line for three, and fits nicely into any villainy deck since he can potentially attack twice per turn. Relentless Pursuit lets you capture a non-leader unit based on the cost of your unit and gives your bounty hunter a shield for doing so. Lastly is Commission, which is Recruit on Steroids. You can even resource it early, smuggling it whenever you have the need. It searches the top 10 cards of your deck for a bounty hunter, item, or transport. Speaking of items, there are 13 that can be fetched with Commission. Notably, this list includes weapons like the Darksaber and some new armor items. The last trait that can be fetched by commission is transport, of which there are 20. Notably, this list includes powerful space units like Bright Hope, Fett's Fire Spray, and Millennium Falcon. The Marauder, Punishing One, and Survivor's Gauntlet are new cards that seem to have some potential. If you find yourself using a decent mix of bounty hunters, items, and or transports, commission is a great way to more reliably play one that is key to your strategy or even trim down the number of each card used. There are 19 non-villainy units that can trigger bo ability. 8 match her aggression aspect, but you'd be hard-pressed not to pair her with Vigilance in order to include some of the other 8. Time will tell if she's locked into red-blue, or if there is a double red version that performs well. 
There are only 10 cards carrying the Wookiee trait, including Chewbacca as the leader from set 1. Wookiee Warrior is a 4 cost 2 5 grit unit that lets you draw a card if you already have a Wookiee out when played. In order to have met that condition on curve, you will need to have played Fugitive Wookiee, Liberated Slaves, or Roshir Tea Tender. Tarful attempts to create some Wookiee tribal synergy, but falls far short of being competitively viable. Set 1 Chewbacca and Set 2 Kersantan might see a little play, but not because of their Wookiee trait. Gentle Giant is outclassed by numerous other cards in the same aspects. The new Chewbacca, however, gives Vigilance Heroism another way to defeat a low HP unit. Do note, however, that his smuggle cost is aggression. That's all I have for today. Please let me know if there's any cards that I may have missed or what you are planning to play in Shadows of the Galaxy. Have a great day.